Hola, hello everybody. My name is Ryan and I am currently enrolled in the Python PostgreSQL and DevOps bootcamp through NewCamp. And in this video, I'm just going to hopefully quickly um, run through what my Python portfolio project is for the first leg of the bootcamp before we move into PostgreSQL and how to incorporate that with Python. So without further ado, I'm hopefully going to um, optimize this video to some of the highlights of my my program here and let me just get this out of the way I am in PyCharm and not VS Code um, the reason is actually quite simple I like to take this laptop here with me out places to work um, I'm very secure with that I don't connect to any whatever nefarious Wi-Fi's but um, I just don't like bringing my new laptop out and you know what I mean I'll have a you know be in a coffee shop just kind of coding along so I don't have VS Code on this laptop I have PyCharm and I actually do prefer PyCharm but um, I'm still learning so I'm sure you can school me on that but anyways here is my code and I'm gonna try and run through it as best as I can um, it's not entirely perfect but I'm pretty happy with what I have here so what what is this program this program is essentially a Spanish verb uh, text adventure style and I'm a high school Spanish teacher so I figured this would be kind of right up my alley um, so let me kind of just jump around here starting at the top you're gonna notice some import statements now I'm importing different modules that I coded as you can see up here uh, in the tabs right and obviously we're trying to organize the code here that's the the purpose of these um, they're all named different things which I will say later and we have a star one okay I mean this is also to show that um, to just kind of show that we did touch upon modules in the boot camp here uh, line five of the code is a class. Now, let me be honest with you. Um, I did want to throw a class in there. Now, I do enjoy working with classes, but um, I'm not actually sure. I'm not 100% confident on this particular class. But let me kind of run through it here. Um, we have a a the def init function. We pass in some parameters. You know the parameters are self. That's a given. Name, occupation, and password. So you start off the game. You have to the user has to input their name, their occupation, and password, and then that is registered in the system. Now, where does it actually happen? Here is the first real kind of thing. We have a variable called name, um, which points to an input function that says in a string here. Welcome to Ryan Spanish world mundo de verbos en español please enter your name we have the line break here because we're gonna the line break right over here as you know we're gonna need a couple of those um, and then obviously we have our occupation right after that once we register our name what is your occupation and that is actually registered here in a f string both of those variables um, this one is just kind of traditional, more traditional. I know F strings are kind of new in Python. Uh, the, the newer versions, just, I could be wrong on that, but I thought I read that somewhere. We enter a while loop once we have registered our name, occupation, and password. Um, actually, you know what? We haven't gotten to the password yet, so sorry. This is the password. Yeah, I just, okay. Um, we have the password variable, which is an input function. And we get a message here. Lastly, please create a secure password um, between five and ten characters, line break, and must contain letters. Now, kind of, you know, random, but I did want some logic in here um, that was somewhat akin to what you might find, although you know how they are nowadays with certain password creation type, uh, type logic. So, 
we have an if statement if the length of the password is and again we we define our password variable right here if the length of the password is less than five we get a message requested pass requested password length is shorter than five characters um so again you kind of into this next one else if we have an elif statement if um elif the length of the password is greater or um, greater than 10 yep the requested password length is longer than 10 characters you get another message and then we have one more elif not password that is alpha function i don't know if i said that right okay i'm still a beginner uh prints we have requested password does not ca contain any characters okay so you have to have a password between five and ten characters and it has to contain letters so you can't use numbers right so again this is what i decided on um because i actually experimented with a couple other ones um other type of logic uh, for the password and they weren't really working for some reason and I just kind of found this and it worked um, I modified it did have to do some research okay and I will say then we break out of the loop and we start to go to the print the, uh, the next print statement which is the message is the game menu that will be referenced throughout press one or two to check the dictionaries line break press three to check your experience wallet or any other key to continue Right, so we enter a another while loop of the menu. Uh, if you press the one, you will um, see the dictionary of verbs you will learn in this game. Now, the dictionary of verbs and the dictionary, or the dictionaries of the verbs you will learn, and dictionaries of verb you have learned in this game are actually in this verb mod verb underscore world module, um, which we'll get to. Okay. Um, so if, if you if your input is one, you will see the dictionary of verbs to learn. If your option is two, you see the verbs learned, and then you have a statement here that's printed as well. You haven't learned any verbs yet, which you haven't even started the game. Um, if the menu option e is equal to three, you have experience wallet in your experience wallet. Okay, so the experience wallet, um, you get points per uh, correct answer, and that goes into your experience wallet, which again, you will also see uh, first and foremost actually defined in the verb world um, module. What else? We break out of the loop. A lot of loops, you're going to see that. Um, And again, we just get another thing here, another message saying the same thing. I tell you to please type out all your answers to the questions in lowercase. Then we get a statement, muy bien, empezamos ahora. Very good, we start now. And write your answers and submit using the enter key. Now, this verb question function that is being called. Where do we see that? Right here. Whoop, sorry, should have scrolled up. Right here. Here, def verb functions, no parameters. I'm sure I could have passed some in there, but I do pass in parameters a little bit later on to my functions. Um, and then again, here we have our list is empty at the start of the game. A dictionary. Whoop, geez, let's change that there. So our dictionary is empty. This dictionary is empty at the start of the game. This is the verbs learned. So again, that's an empty dictionary, which it does get printed out. Um, verbs to learn and now these are the six verbs you're going to learn in English uh, first key the keys are to do something in English and then the values are the Spanish infinitive verbs which you'll see so we have to talk to eat to write to work to learn to live and you'll see how those are being presented and of course you start off with zero in your experience why and again the function below runs through the verb questions in the game or the first sets to be precise. Let's do the first set. I'm making some adjustments. What are you gonna do? So anyways, yeah, yeah. So, so we start here while true another while loop. You know, <laughs> we have a function to talk. Yep, yep, yep. I correlated it with this. And the question is, ¿Cómo se dice to talk in español? How do you say to talk in Espanol? Here are your opciones. Now, 
you are taking a guess here, right? Unless you know it, that's kind of what I'm seeing, you know what I mean? So again, if the talk is equals doubles equals to hablar, print. Excelente, to talk es hablar en español. So you got that right. Now, the verbs learned dictionary um, in the uh, is the key of hablar is added to the no sorry the value of hablar is added to the key of to talk. And then what happens? Um, actually, you know what? Let me rephrase that. The key of to talk is given the value. The key of hablar is given the value to talk. So, the verbs to learn lists, the to talk is popped out, and then you have your updated dictionary printed out of your verbs learned with that, that new info you just learned. With the experience wall, I put it as a global function here because it was giving me issues because it wasn't uh, global and now it wanted to be global. Okay. And then experience wall, we get 10 in there. Plus equals 10. Print, you earned 10 points. You now have, this is going to show up as 10 in your experience wallet. Break. Else. Print, intenta otra vez, por favor, to talk is not to talk. Okay. Now. This goes back to this. All right. Print. Excellent. They notice that the verb alert ends in AR. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and the else statement is going to make you keep inputting it until you get the correct answer. Same thing with comer. Right? We have the verbs learned dictionary uh, added to our key and value. It's popped out of the verbs to learn. Get for tat. Experience while it's added, yada yada yada, same thing. And then we have two rights, same thing. We have the verbs learner dictionary updated with new key value. That's good to be so to write. And then we pop it out of so the other one. We get 10 more. So we could have 30 in our experience wallet. And then I have now, in good evening, now we should put them into practice with a quick quiz, but first we will revisit the menu. So, not the menu again, just to kind of show you that there is a menu, right? Um, and to just kind of see, to check it out now that you've done some stuff in the game. Now, um, we have please write the correct verb in order to complete the statement according to the context. This is you're using the verbs you learned right above or prior in the game and I'm having a having it where you are completing the sentence me gusta what la hamburguesa y las papas fritas now obviously this is I named it to eat question because you want to put the verb to eat so if the eat question is equals to double equal to comer that's correct and I explain that in your experience wallet, you break out of the loop. If it's wrong, incorrecto trata trata de nuevo por favor. Oh yeah, and I do translate the question from Spanish to English. Same thing for escribir. All right. Same thing for escribir. Different question. Same thing for hablar, but a different question. And that is the verb world dot module. Now, let's jump back to our original portfolio project. Now, we just ran through this function. Prince, now we continue to the next level where you will learn the remaining, remaining three verbs. Okay? Remaining three verbs. Now, you have the login function. Okay? The login function. Now, if you remember here, name, occupation, password from our class that we defined at the beginning of the game. Where do we find the login function? In verb world 2, naturally. 
Now, World War II, let's check it out. Import, we import random. We'll see why. Now we also import some stuff from verb underscore world. We will import everything for star. Now you're going to notice here we have experience wallet we'll defined at 75. Now you might be saying, why didn't I carry the experience wallet? Why didn't I call it from the other module? Or why did I have to kind of recode it into here? Well, because it was the best way for me to mitigate some issues. It wasn't it's getting some errors. Anyways, I can explain this more if you really want to know. But let's move on. We have the login function name, oc occupation password. Those are the parameters. Now, I think I can run this block, this function, um, without the parameters, and it'll still work. I'm pretty sure I tried that. I can try it again, but anyways. If I have it here, in order to proceed to the next level, you need to log in again. Just kind of... Having the, having the user re-log in, you know, I don't know, maybe you'd have to do that somehow, some some type of website or whatever. But I just want to test some very basic authentication. So again, if login name equals input, enter your name. So if your login name is double equals to your name, which is in the class, your authentication is complete. Else, you would have to try it again, yada, yada, you're going to keep looping. And then same thing for the occupation, same thing for your password. And anyways, we we will see here. Then what happens? Let's jump back there. Okay, then we enter the verb questions two function. Now where is that? Right here. This one I was pretty pumped on. I did have to do some research, but I made it work. And I could have optimized this code. Maybe I could have condensed the lines or whatever, but it's where the random comes in. So, so I have a while, while statement, scramble underscore aprender, aprender means to learn, right? So anyways, we're on scram, we're, you're getting aprender, that's the, that's what you want to figure out. So you're getting it in a scrambled way. So all these words are jumbled up. Now we have L equals list, scramble aprender, so we kind of treat it like it's a list. We shuffle, it's the, we call this as a, a variable called L, so we shuffle it. Now Y equals empty string dot join L, so that's going to make a a jumbled up word. Unscramble the following verb, F string, oh look at that, that's your scrambled verb. It's an ER verb, meaning it ends in ER, good, so you should be able to remember that from the verb world thing there. Now, to learn. It is como se dice to learn in Espanol. Please unscramble the verb. So, you know it ends in ER, and you have to just kind of make some combinations. You could look do some research, too. But that's kind of the fun of it, right? You have to kind of jumble it around. So, if to learn is ap equals aprender, <clears throat> excuse me, again, you have this appended, essentially, or added to your list, key and value, and then just popped out of the old, the ones you, the verbs you have to learn. Get it again. I have experience wallet global here. Might have to take that out. And then experience wallet plus equals 20. And then we have you earn 20 points. You have experience wallet and experience wallet. Yeah, yeah. Same thing, but different questions. So I'm pretty pumped with the scramble. Trabajar, which means to work. You get the same thing. And vivir, same thing. So we have an AR, ER, and IR for both rounds, but try to kind of mix it up here. Now, let's check it out here. We'll finish with another quiz. I give you another quiz that is similar to fill in the blanks. Okay, another fill in the blanks with those three new verbs. And then what happens? Well, Felicitaciones, you just completed Ryan's Spanish verb game. You can now use the points in your experience while to purchase yourself a trip to these countries. Now, we have travel selection with a parameter called travel prizes. Now, where do you get that? From the prizes module. Ooh. Import star, which is, I mean, really, there's not a whole lot there. So we have a list here. Travel prizes, Argentina, 200 experience. Colombia, 170 experience. 
you're gonna have 210 at this point regardless okay regardless but um I incorporated this as a list. Uh, what else we have? Uh, Mexico, Peru, and Ecuador. So Argentina, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, Ecuador. Now, why a, li why a list instead of a dictionary? Well, I just wanted to throw in a list there, okay? Um, I had a dictionary before. Right? <laughs> Alright, so anyways. We have our experience wallet, 210. We know that. Again, there's probably a different way I could have coded this, but okay. So we're defining a function travel selection, travel prizes, which is the list up here. So for I in range or for prize and travel prizes, we're printing, we're iterating through the list and we're printing it. So you see that. Experience while it's global here, I don't know why I keep putting it global in the functions. It's probably something I'm going to need to alter if I want to be super clean and pythonic. Now, you have experience wallet and your experience wallet. Where would you like to purchase your trip to? Price selector equals integer input. One, to save your experience. Two, to choose your own. Now, if price selector equals one, print. Okay, we have to see you in the next game. That's cool, and the game ends with your experience wallet. Okay. And I might, I might actually code a sequel to this. But anyways, so if you choose the two, then... Where would you like to go? And you, if you type these places here, then I, I minus that amount from your experience wallet, and then I show it to you again. Just some action of integers being stored in variables here in Python. Nothing too crazy, but just trying to show the different some of the different things we did. Um, and then you have you now have your update experience wallet, the balance, your change, and then I have a fun fact for each country. So yeah, this is it. Let's see how, okay, 22 minutes. Let's run it, why not? So you have it here. Welcome to Ryan's Spanish Verb Game. Mundo de Verbos en Español, what's on our name? Ryan. Hola, Ryan, what is your occupation? Teacher. Now create a secure password, secure password between five and, let's try ASD. Request password length is shorter than five characters. Let's try a um, bunch of random numbers. Please password requested password length is longer than ten characters. Let's try a bunch of numbers less than that. Requested password does not contain any letters. So let's just do um, hello. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Um, let's check the dictionary verbs you'll learn in the game. So here you go. When you learn a verb, that here we go. Como se dice to talk? Comer. That's wrong. Intenta otra vez, por favor. Comer is, is not to talk. Como se dice to talk yet? No, let's do hablar. Como se dice to eat? Let's do comer. Como se dice to write? Let's do escribir, but type it wrong. Wrong. Let's type it correctly. Now, increíble, now you should put them in, uh, into practice with a quick quiz, and then let's see here, dictionary verbs you learned in this game, dictionary verbs you have learned in this game. Right, so, hablar, comer, escribir, write the correct verb, me gusta comer, la hamburguesa, that's very nice. We got some more, we have 45 in our experience Well, now, Stephen King, es importante hablar mucho? No, es importante escribir mucho. And then we have to gusta hablar por teléfono. Um, and then we have to log in again. So we just completed that. So let's do Ryan. Let's say we do that right. Authentication for name complete. Let's see. Occupation. Programmer. LOL. Nope. Incorrect. Please try again. It was teacher. Right. And our password. What was the password then? Let's try... Oh, I remember. Let's say it was hola. Nope, it was hello with two O's. Nope, it was like... Yeah. There we go. Here's... Uh, we have to unscramble this. Let's do... Aprender. No, it's aprender. And again, it's changed each time. 
Trabajar? No. Trabajar? Yep. Good. How much is it to live? Vivar? Nope. Vivir. Yep. So there you go. Um, let's check. Verbs. You will learn. There are no more verbs left to learn. Empty list. I mean, I could probably just. Maybe I'll get rid of the empty list there. So you prefiero what? Again, since we can cognates. Vivir en Colombia en un departamento. La universidad es buena para trabajar. Nueva información. No, para aprender. To learn new information. En una carrera profesión es necesario. Trabajar muchas horas. There you go. And now we can pick a place to go. So let's go to. Um, let's two, and then let's go to Peru, because that's where I'm going. Then I say, ah, oh, you now have 30 in experience. Well, fun fact, Wakachina is the only natural oasis in South America. Gracias for playing. Adios, and we're going to Peru. Thank you for watching. Gracias. I know it was a little long, but I wanted to go into some detail here. So, gracias. And I know I did kind of catch some things. That's why I kind of made this video. So I can catch some things while I go through the code. To a purpose here. So happy holidays, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Ciao. Bye-bye. Happy coding.